gird your loins and eat your onion bagels because florals in spring are back as the cultural phenomenon The Devil Wears Prada is coming back for a sequel 20 years after its first instalment. As 20th Century Fox has now been absorbed, runway fashion magazine now has to report to Disney. But although they'll have a Disney budget, do they have all the pieces to give this classic film the continuation it deserves? Well, details are now pouring in, or should I say drizzling in, so join me today as I take a look at what we know so far about The Devil Wears Prada 2. And like this video for more Devil Wears Prada content. You're watching Matthew Rogers. Based on the novel of the same name, The Devil Wears Prada follows the career of Andy Sachs and her dream of being a journalist before finding herself working for the Prada donning devil in the form of Runway's editor-in-chief, Miranda Priestley, alongside her assistant Emily. It does look like Disney is taking this sequel seriously as Variety reports they are in final talks with the key contributors to the first movie, specifically the original screenwriter, Aline Brosh McKenna, known for creating Crazy Ex-Girlfriend and writing Disney's Cruella, and also producer Wendy Feynman. Of course, the Streep, Hathaway, Blunt trinity are also in final talks considering this is the sequel to their story, however details of their return are not yet known. Almost the entire main cast of the original were either big stars already or now certainly are, but I'd expect Streep would be the toughest sell considering she absolutely hated having to be so horrible to the rest of the cast in character as Miranda. I was aware that it was supposed to be fun to play this kind of a villainous kind of character, but um, I just was so aware of her pain and um, the things that were not working in her life. Is that Anne Hathaway screaming in the next room? <laughs> Probably. Personally, I will also be wanting a return of three more people. Fan favourite Nigel, played by the brilliant Stanley Tucci, which would make sense considering he's still a key player in the fashion industry, even after the events of the first movie. Did he ever forgive Miranda for betraying him? Maybe he started his own fashion magazine. I'd also want Theodore Shapiro back to do the musical score. That man perfectly navigates emotion and tension, and the score to Devil Wears Prada, although still technically yet to be officially released, is one of my all-time favourite scores. But arguably one of the most important alumni is David Frankel as director. Frankel walked the line of office drama, comedy and inspiration in the 2006 movie, even managing to narrow down and pinpoint a more accurate tone than appeared in even the books, which I'll come back to later. Villain entrances are always an exciting and hopefully terrifying part of a story being told, and even in similar movies to this, they try and instill fear in you immediately when the boss or villain arrives, but I don't think any movie has ever came close to the Enter Miranda sequence. I knew as soon as Emily's phone rang that this movie was something different. The continuously escalating musical score, the intentionally not being able to see Miranda's face whilst she enters, the sheer terror of the faces of her employees shown instead, that's an entrance. For those that may not have seen the movie in a while, it has been just shy of 20 years after all, the movie came to a close after a luncheon in Paris, where Miranda announces her should-be replacement, Jacqueline, as James Holt's new creative director, meaning Miranda sacrificed Nigel's big break to keep her own job. Andy confronts Miranda for what she did to Nigel, but Miranda responds to this pointing out that Andy has already done the same thing to Emily by sacrificing her opportunity to come to Paris, causing Andy to realise she's becoming Miranda and quitting immediately. After Andy ambiguously makes up with her boyfriend Nate, God I hope he doesn't return, the true villain of this movie, Andy then lands a job at a reputable New York newspaper with a recommendation from Miranda, which leads us to the sequel. The book Revenge Wears Prada is Lauren Weisberger's 2013 sequel to The Devil Wears Prada, and takes place about a decade after the events of the first instalment, which is a bit less time than real life, but a time jump rather than us all pretending the cast doesn't look 20 years older overnight is understandable. The first movie definitely took some liberties from the first book, but let's look now at the synopsis of the events in the second book, which may or may not occur in the sequel movie, so spoiler alert, maybe. Quote, Andy and Emily, her former nemesis and co-assistant, have joined forces to start a high-end bridal magazine, The Plunge, which has quickly become required reading for the young and stylish. Now they get to call all the shots. Andy writes and travels to her heart's content, Emily plans parties and secures advertising like a seasoned pro, 
Even better, Andy has met the love of her life, Max Harrison, who comes from a storied media family, is confident, successful and drop dead gorgeous. Their wedding will be splashed across all of the society pages as their friends and family gather to toast the glowing couple. Andy Sachs is on top of the world, but calm as a bitch. The morning of her wedding, Andy can't shake the past, and when she discovers a secret letter with crushing implications, her wedding day jitters turn to cold dread. Andy realises that nothing, not her husband nor her beloved career, is as it seems. She never suspected that her efforts to build a bright new life would lead her back to the darkness she barely escaped 10 years ago, and directly into the path of the devil herself." End quote. There you have it, but there are no promises that this movie will even be based on the book's sequel, so take this as a grain of salt. Although a shift up in the story would be required, they need a sequel and not a remake after all, I would still like to see our fair share of callbacks to the original. A little bit of fan service would be more than welcome here. Maybe Miranda's twins are done with the final Harry Potter book and now they want the final Game of Thrones sequel. But 20 years on, I guess her daughters would be grown adults now and I somehow doubt they've stuck around with their mother. Considering the cult following this iconic 2006 rom-com has, I think a sequel is bound to be successful. Disney just needs to not make it a money grab and be faithful to the original and its characters. But what are you most looking forward to in the sequel? Any characters you specifically want to see 20 years on? Let me know. Until next time, you can keep up with what I'm watching by following me on TikTok, Twitter and Letterboxd, which are all linked in the description. But for now, this is Matt Rogers and that's all.